Greg Smoke. Jason King, Sikkim365.com, college basketball writer and analyst, joins us on Sikkim365 Radio and 365 Sports. Jason, it was an impressive win, especially considering they're playing Texas, who's had looked like they'd kind of turned the corner. But uh, obviously, as even your story said, it was uh, dampened because of the loss to, uh, of Jonathan Chamachachua. Your thoughts about the, how do they fill that role? Can, can they find minutes from some other players that we don't really know or haven't seen much of? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I definitely think you may see a little bit of Zach Loveday, but as far as, you know, significant minutes for him, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say that. He's just such a different type of player than, than, than John and not nearly as athletic. I, I think that they're just going to have to play even smaller than they already have and, you know, probably use Sohan uh, at the five a little bit. Uh, we saw him do that a couple of times already this year. I think Iowa State was a game he did that. And uh, and then, you know, Flo is going to have to play a lot down there and stay out of foul trouble, you know, and that's one thing that, you know, it's kind of been an issue for him at times this year is, you know, he, he, he does get in foul trouble, but it hasn't been too big of a problem because then they can just, you know, rotate him and, and John uh, in and out. But now it becomes an even bigger problem uh, you know, importance for him to, to not do that. I, I thought he played the best game of his career uh, against Texas the other day, not just from a statistical standpoint with the double-double, but I just loved his fire and aggression. And um, not that he doesn't play like that usually, but I just thought it was at a different level, uh, you know, with the shot blocking and everything else the other day. So that was really encouraging at a time when they really needed something, something positive. <laughs> do you think we'll see um... – Maybe like Matthew Meyer and Jeremy Sohan also maybe at the five as well. Yeah, I mean maybe you know just having them having them both in there, at a, you know, at a forward forward type position at the same time without question. <laughs> you know, those guys are so good because they they're just such tough matchup problems for you know an opponent because they can they can play the five and they can almost play the the two. You know what I mean? So with with the, with as skilled and athletic as they are and long as they are, so you know. Initially, when when John went down, I mean, I was like, man, their ceiling just got a lot lower, you know, for how far they could go, how good they could be, and I mean, it hurts. But I'm the more I think about it, I, I think they still may be okay. I mean, not, maybe not as dominant or whatever, but I, you know, but that this this uh, coaching staff has shown that they can adapt to adversity. We saw it when Tristan Clark went down you know, two or three years ago, and we thought that was going to end their season, and they actually got better. I'm not saying this to me get better, but they'll, they'll find out, they'll find a way to, to work around it and, and still be really uh, tough to beat. Just in terms of JTT's story, Jason, and uh, his transfer to Baylor and the work he's put in and all of that, just what was kind of running through your head when he went down, and, and we all kind of realized pretty quickly, like, oh, this is one where he's probably not coming back anytime soon. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what really sucks when you cover a team like like you guys do and like I do uh, a little bit is um, you get to know these guys and even if I'm not saying we're all buddy buddy with them but we know their stories and we kind of watch them grow up right in front of our eyes and whether it's how they develop on the court how they mature off of it how they carry themselves how they adapt to the culture and man he to me I think he had kind of become the face of that program I mean the the, the guy that you know ever the, the you know, just brought so much life to it and energy and, and just good, positive vibes. And when you talk about culture, I mean, he kind of defines Baylor's culture. Um, and that's what made it so tough to watch. Uh, you know, forget about, you know, their ceiling and how far they could go. But, guy, I mean, there's he's as good of a kid as there is in college basketball. And I think that's why you saw Chris Beard, you know, say the things he said. I mean, it's just you hate to see – Good. You hate to see that happen to anyone, but when it happens to one of the best guys, one of the best personalities, one of the nicest kids, it just it kind of stings even more. And and man, that, that's that's kind of what I was feeling. And yeah, it was nice to see him go out and take it to Texas and dominate. But I still walked away with kind of a an empty feeling, just feeling bad for that guy. I really did. So the uh, it, and it comes the injury comes just what three days after Jonathan had uh, twenty one points. In, a, in yeah. a huge, huge role, and was, uh, and I even asked he and uh, also Scott Drew after the game Wednesday night against Kansas State. It, it seemed like even though he's always kind of gathered guys around the free throw line or in that area, if someone's shooting a free throw or they are, you know, did he kind of rise up? And I thought he did, you know, and 
Yeah. It's just, uh, God, it sucks. Now, yeah, you yeah, know, go, you, go you talk about this team. One thing someone said, you know, does this team have a leader? And, and uh, I think that was an issue that was brought up after maybe after the Kansas loss. Oh, there's not a dominant person that not a dominant personality out there. Whatever. But I mean, he, he was as close to this team's leader as anyone was, I think, you know, and the leader is not always your, your leading scorer or your best player. Uh, it's just your, your best, the, the guy that everyone respects the most and the guy that leads by example and the guy that picks people up when they're down and the guy that always stays positive, even when there's not a lot of reasons to be positive. And, and to me, he was that guy for the team. And, you know, he'll, you know him though. I mean, we're going to, he'll be at the end of that fence leading the charge and, and, and in the locker room or whatever. I mean, he, he's still going to be a, a big presence on this team. I remember a few years ago, that guy, Obama, KK, I mean, people said he was one of the biggest leaders on that team, but he barely even played. So <laughs> still possible for John to impact this team, but my gosh, you know, he was doing so well and everyone was so happy for him. And this is a, this is a big setback. It's going to be a long, hard recovery, but, uh, but he'll get through it. Well, the good news, Jason, outside of, of that injury was Adam Flagler looked like himself again for the first time yeah. in a couple of weeks. He was locked in and James Akinjo late looked like he was maybe shaking out of it. Is, is that something, uh, I mean, that you saw as, you know, maybe they can continue that going forward or should we wait until they go to Lubbock on Wednesday night? Well, I mean, Lubbock's got to be tough, uh, but you know, don't, I mean, I'm not good. I don't want to downplay what Akinzo's done these last two games. That's, that's two straight good ones for him. You know, K-State, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, man. Like, like going in there and winning by 15 or whatever it was, most people won't really, you know, think much of that. But K-State had KU down by 19 there. I think they beat Texas. Actually, they beat Texas in Austin. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing good competitive games with, with almost everyone they play right now. So going in there and winning handily and him having a good game there was, was big for him. And then obviously, like you said, David, Texas, I thought everyone assumed they had turned the corner. And they, and they still may have. They just ran into a buzzsaw Saturday. But that was a nice win, you know, against some, some talented players. So I'm really encouraged by Kenzo and, and Flagler as well. You know, I, I just like you said, Flagler just seems so locked in and just and more just so assertive and aggressive. Sometimes he kind of drifts at times and disappears a little bit. But, boy, the other day he was, for a long stretch of that game, he was the best player on the court. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like both Flagler and Akenjo both are as close to being back to healthy after they had kind of struggled. Yeah. And Sohan obviously is fine. The crier is an everyday deal. You just, you know, you just don't know. Um, right. Have you heard? You have any inkling at all? And I, I know we keep up pain management. Jerome Tang said in an interview Friday with us that that he he saw him taking some shots the other day and looked like he had not missed a beat. But I I would think his cardio has got to be uh, a, a big problem. Yeah, right. I, I just feel like when he I, I feel like whatever happens, he's never going to be a hundred percent this season. I mean, I, I just he's going to eventually come back, and he, he probably won't. I mean, maybe he'll still be really good, but I, I think you know, I think probably off season surgery is in his future. But I think he's going to have to try to tough it out and play, you know, somehow over this next month and, and contribute. And I think he will. You know, he cried eighty percent or seventy percent, still going to be really good. So I think once it's tolerable, you're going to you're going to see him back there. But I don't, I don't think he'll ever be a hundred percent. Tell you the truth, I'm not sure he's been a hundred percent all year. I mean, he was dealing with uh, some some foot issues even before the season started. I think this has kind of been something that's nagging with him all year so and he's been pretty darn good at <laughs> you know maybe not at 100 percent. so but they got to get him back i mean especially now with john out i mean they gotta you know have all their guards so they can really play small and rotate guys and now they need another ball handler out there and, you know if you're looking for positives i mean at least this is giving dale bonner a chance to mm -hmm. kind of get his feet wet and not feel overwhelmed by the increased uh, competition level than what he's used to i think he looks a lot more comfortable and assertive out there not still we're not seeing a ton of it on the scoreboard, but that's okay. He's doing a lot of other good things. And I bet he has a game eventually where he hits and you know, he knocks down four or five threes. Uh, so, and, and, you know, I thought Meyer the last two games has been a lot better. I, you know, he's received some pretty well deserved criticism, I think, uh, for some pretty lackluster performances, but he's really seemed to have stepped up these last two games, too. So there's a lot of good things going on right now. I do think they're going to have a tough time Wednesday, uh, but win or lose. I mean, if they go out there and compete hard and, and, don't get blown out like they did at Kansas. Maybe even win the game. I mean, I think that they're going to be okay. If they win the game in Lubbock on Wednesday, that oh, that would be incredible. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's impossible, but especially after losing one of your guys because Tech is so long and angular, and you know they 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 really do 
good at playing volleyball around the rim with rebounds? I think they're. I think I just think Baylor's a better team. I mean, but I just think that environment's going to be really tough. And you know, I, you know, when John went down the other day, there was a lot of emotion, a, a lot of emotions surrounding that. A lot of you know, let's rally around this and, and elevate our play even more. But you know, to me, Wednesday's a game where you could you could kind of come out flat. You know, I mean, that's just that would be natural, I think. For that. and let's hope it doesn't. I mean, this team rarely rarely does that. It's just frustrating because I mean, I, I it's hard. People wouldn't outside of Waco wouldn't understand this considering the Kansas blowout but I still think when this team is healthy and playing at its best I still think it's the best team in the league uh, you know if you look at Kansas I looked at it earlier I think they've what have they won either nine or ten conference games now but either way five of their wins have come by three points or less I mean it's amazing how many close games they're winning and hey credit to them for for being tough down the stretch and you know pulling games out and making big shots and comebacks and whatever, but Kansas could easily right now have about three or four losses in this league. Whereas every game Baylor has won is, I mean, they've lost three pretty handily, and then they they've won nine, you know, damn near blowouts in all of them. You know, so it's uh, it's weird. I, I just uh, it's just I keep waiting for Kansas to drop one. And they they seems like every game they almost do, but find a way to win at the end. My point being Baylor. Is going to have a tough time winning this Big 12 title, but I still think they might be the best team. <clears throat> Thank you, Jason. Appreciate your time. Jason King, Sikkim, 365 basketball analyst, and also Mike on the uh, chat room was talking about Jason was a great beat writer for Kansas City Star covering the Jayhawks. Uh, back in the day, good stuff, Mike. Thank you. And uh, Jason is a fantastic basketball analyst. Yeah, he and is. Writer. And, uh, yeah, kind of a wrestling fan. He was actually there the night uh, Owen Hart passed away at uh, Kemper Arena in Kansas City. And I've never had a chance to talk to Jason about that, but I did I'd read a couple articles he wrote about that over the years. That had to be probably something you didn't want to be, be there for, quite honestly. But, uh, yeah, I remember reading that from him at the time. Like, that would have been 98-ish. Mm. Um, and... Yeah, I, I remember uh, then reading him talk about it a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, did always did a good job with KC, but it's great to have him, uh, you know, doing a lot uh, with our site and especially in covering Baylor basketball. That's his bread and butter. And, and I know he and Ashley in particular uh, love the Bears uh, and love the hoops, and, and uh, they do a good job covering it. So if you love Baylor hoops, then uh, look no further than Sikkim 365 for, for Jason and Kendall, too, and Ashley. And, I mean, there's – handful of guys all talking basketball on there so definitely give that a look if you haven't already you know one of the notes about texas tech is uh, not too long after baylor lost jonathan chambachachua and also uh, he's out for the year uh mcculler uh, who has obviously one of their best players and one of their leaders on that team he had stepped on the uh, i think the foot of jamie dixon the tcu head coach and uh, it, nothing that appears to be severe, but, uh, you know, a high ankle sprain, whatever. You never know about his availability, whether it's on Wednesday or also how annoying that could be uh, going forward. When we come back, Luke Fickle has a new contract.